Welcome back to Day and Night Forex and in this video we are going to be expanding a little bit more on smart money concepts and how to trade them looking at the market structures and all those interesting things that you need to understand when it comes to trade like the big boys right that you know that is what we do here you've been seeing our results on Instagram and all our social media platforms if you're not following us already make sure that you're following us all the links are going to be down in the description without wasting much of your time let's get straight into this video these are the things that we're going to be looking at firstly we're going to be talking about the smart money concepts then we're going to look at the market structure in detail explain a little bit more on what to look at when you talk about market structure the way the big boys look at it which is different from what retail traders look at it from that we're going to be diving into the three types of liquidity grabs that you need to look out for so liquidity grabs you're going to understand a little bit more as we go further into this video these are some of the very key concepts that you need to understand when you try to enter the market using the big boy strategy speaking of entries we're also going to be looking at different ways that you can enter into this market so that you you never miss a trade right so so that you're always in the trade because you know with these order blocks and smart money concepts the entries can be as to the point as much as to a peep right so you can go straight into profit with the zero drawdown whatsoever so it's very key that you understand the different types of entries and then you back test to see which one works best for you so we're going to be uh, giving you those in the later in this video so make sure that you keep watching all the way to the end then we also going to talk about the three factors that you need to look at when choosing order blocks in the market because it's not every order block that you need to, to trade so there needs to be the three factors that you need to look at uh, for you to basically validate uh, an order block before placing your, your entries on that uh, based on that order block then lastly but not least we're going to be looking at the three types of order blocks that you need to know about right so there are different uh, the different types of order blocks that you can look for in the market and we're going to be giving you three types that you can uh, look for and then uh, basically get started uh, from there right so for you to be able to trade like the big boys like the smart money the way they move the market you need to understand the market structure right you need to understand liquidity and then you need to you need to be able to spot those entries as well right so those are the things that we're going to be talking about concerning the smart money concept right so starting off with the market structure right so market structure is king right so you need to understand that technical analysis the way we talk about market structure and everything right so before we do any fundamental analysis we all, we, we have to look at the charts and understand where the market is going right whether where the market is uh, trying to push based on the market structure right so basically with market structure we're just looking at the past results showing us where the market is about to go to based on what is what the big boys have been doing right so if, if the market is in an uptrend we are expecting uh, some pullbacks and then join the market makers uh, going in the uptrend right so if the market is in a downtrend we're also looking to enter the market and continue with them in the downtrend right so that is what we're talking about when it comes to uh, market structure right so basically in market structure what we're looking for we this is where we talk about uh, things like support and resistance as well right so basically you know with the support uh, these are the concepts that you basically have to know when you whether you are new to trading or you are professional or whatever whatever level you are at when it comes to trading market structure you know this is the basics of forex and everybody needs to know about this right so uh, the basics include the support and resistance levels right so when it comes to support and resistance is basically the levels where the market is failing to break right so uh, firstly this is what we call our support right so it's a level where the market is bouncing off and basically failing to uh, breakthrough uh, when you are trying to go to the downside right so this these are the levels that we talk about when it comes to support and resistance so this this you should be familiar with uh, as well as our uh, the opposite side of that which is basically our uh, resistance levels right so this is the points that the market is trying to break through but then failing right and then when it when it finally breaks through like what it did over here so when the market finally breaks through these levels uh, this is when it becomes uh, so this at this point we are looking at it as resistance right so it's still resistance at this point but then once the market passes through it and then comes to uh, retest it it basically becomes our support levels right so we now call it a support so basically resistance gets turns into a support when it's broken through and then uh, for the vice versa over here if the market is to come and actually manages to break through this point and then it comes back to retest it here over here so now we now have support level is now turned into resistance uh, and basically the market is now going to the down side right so this is what we these are the basics of forex trading right this is what you need to understand as a beginner that we have the different types of market structures and when we talk about market structures we are talking about the up uh, the uptrend the downtrend the, the consolidations and then the support resistance levels uh, which are very key when it comes to understanding what the market is doing based on the structure of the candlesticks or the charts that we're looking at now when it comes to finding these uh, support resistance levels we are always looking for them on the higher time frames right so higher time frames they 
they vary depending on your trading style if you're a scalper uh, you basically maybe taking your trades or entries on one minute to five minutes so basically anything above from 15 minutes and above is basically higher time frame for you right so uh, but for others who are swing traders basically they will be looking to take their trades on maybe h1 15 minute and even sometimes on the four hours so basically your h your higher time frame will be the four hour the daily even the weekly and monthly as well right so it just depends on your uh, trading skill and what type of uh, trader you are right that's where that determines the higher time frame for you but basically the higher time frames they always give us the overall uh, direction of the market and we try to stick to that when it comes to finding the actual direction of the market right based on market structure now while we're still talking about this uh, market structure when it comes to trading forex we're always looking to buy low and sell high right so so let's say this is the range that we are trying to buy at so this is this is the range that we're trying to get our our trade at and we are looking at this at this level is basically right so this is our low and this is, this is our high point and we are looking for a trade within this trade because remember this is a four hour right this is a four hour chart so if you go down to maybe to 15 and one minute we can actually look for some very good entries on this on uh, range over here right so we are looking to buy low and to sell high right so these are what we call our premium and discounted prices right so for premium price we are looking to sell at the highest point right so if this is our range over here we are looking to sell anyway close to this uh highest points over here so this is where the uh, the this is where the price is its most expensive uh range right so when the price comes to that and we are on a lower time frame like what it is doing over here right now we look for our confirmations and then sell with the big boys right we sell and basically uh, we are looking to buy again at the discounted prices at the bottom right here right so this is uh, the discounted prices because this is a range where the market is at right so until it actually uh, then later on maybe breaks above these levels right so maybe breaks above it breaks above comes back to retest and then pushes away from that from that zone and then now that is when we are now looking for um, you know new ranges but at this moment uh, basically this is our range that we're looking at right so we are looking at this uh at this high over here for our take profits and basically our selling point because this is where the the, pre the price has been the highest at for this range over here and this, this is where we're looking to buy or take our profits for the sales uh, because this is the lowest uh, price that the buyers have been going into the market after the price comes to this level over here right that's basically what you need to understand about premium and um discounted prices we always aim to buy low and sell high that's basically what we're trying to uh, to explain with this concept over here okay now to move on we're going to explain about uh, liquidity as we said we have three types of liquidity so basically this liquidity examples if i can just plot them for you here uh firstly we have what we call the double bottom liquidity right so we're going to show you examples of this uh just now but basically with double uh, but double bottom and double top liquidity is basically like a sort of a w formation but then what happens is that so this is a, a typical w formation that we usually look for in the market right so what happens with liquidity grabbing is that instead of the market pushing all the way up it to it comes back to be just below these levels over here to take out all the stop losses right so before we we go any further let's explain what we talk about what, what do we mean by liquidity grabbing right so basically what we mean by liquidity is basically just the market makers going where the money is being kept right so basically when we enter our trades on this setup over here obviously our stop loss is going to be just a couple of pips maybe we found any golfing candle over here and we're now looking to go bullish right so our our stop loss is going to be just a, a couple of pips below this w legs over here right so that is where the money is right that is what the so the big boys are looking for those stop losses that we put over here and that is what we call liquidity right so so this is the first example that we have which is the double bottom uh, liquidity as well as the double top right so it's just the same but inverse right so and then we also have the what we call the trend line liquidity so basically with the trend line liquidity let's say the market is in a downtrend uh basically we create a low a lower low and then a lower high high lower low lower high lower low and lower high right so and then you know the market continues like that as uh, the market is going in a downtrend right so and then we have our trend line and over here touching different this different touches over here right so retail traders when they plot these trend lines they're basically looking for entries uh at the to sell at this uh, when the market comes back to retest this trend line right so let's say maybe uh they sold 
at this second touch over here and then they're looking to take profit at the at the low over there so their stop loss is going to be somewhere here or usually they'll put it above uh, the previous lower high right so like over here so this over be, this will be our previous lower high and then they'll put their uh, stop loss just above that so that they can be protected if the market tries to retest this level before pushing down right and basically the big boys know about this right so they know where the stop losses are and they're trying to get uh, to those stop losses because that is where the the money is being kept right so they are trying to take our money and basically take out take us out of the market so what will happen in most cases we should show you an, a good example that we have on one of the charts they will come basically take out all these stop losses that you've been putting all these trades that you are entering on, in the, on your trend lines and then once they take those stop losses which we refer to as a complex pullback it will push back down again and in this case in in most cases depending on how much money it is taken or how many stop losses has been taken and how much momentum it has it will actually fall much faster than uh, um, you know the overall trend that was going on over here right so it will have more momentum to actually push to the downside and basically gives it a, you know that's where you get some huge candles or some quick movements and this is uh, these are ideal trades that we're actually tr trying to catch because you you don't have to be in the market for the long time right so these are very good and quick trades uh, that we can be looking out for so this is our second type of liquidity grab which we call the the trend line liquidity grab right so moving on we have to uh moving on to our third one and then the third one we refer to as the liquidity to the downside right so basically the market will be in a downtrend and then it starts to start Start to build up some complex pullbacks uh, you know going up but then doesn't really break past uh, the previous lower highs or yeah the lower highs over here but continues uh, again and give us another lower low over here so basically this is what we what we refer to as liquidity grab to the downside right so basically the, the market is still in a downtrend but then it's just giving us some complex pullbacks and then uh, you you know if you are trading on a lower time frame maybe this let's say this is overall an h1 time frame but then if you go down to maybe a 15 minute uh, five minute chart you're going to start to see a, a change in a trend right but then overall we still haven't broken past this uh, lower high over here which means that we're still in a downtrend right so but only when we break past it and then uh, close above that uh, point that's when we have you know a broken trend and basically we're looking for the trend to change right so in some cases it will be just liquidity grab they want you to think that we have broken past these levels but then we're still uh, in, a, in a down you know downtrend and they catch most retail traders in that way as well right so so this is something that you need to look out for as well. So those are our three types, different types of liquidity grabs. Uh, so we have, uh, if you can just re quickly recap, we have the double bottom or double top a liquidity grab over here. And then we have our trend line liquidity grab also works on, even if the market is in an uptrend. So it's just the opposite of what you're seeing over here if you're going in an uptrend. And then we have complex pullback. The market basically tries to confuse us and make us think that the trend has changed. But in actual fact, we are still in the same trend that we are at the moment on a higher time frame, right? Which is basically gives us the actual um the actual direction of the market so these are the three different types of uh, liquidity grabs that you need to keep in mind when you are analyzing the charts now to move on before we actually move on to the uh, to the deeper uh, lessons in this video basically what you need to understand is that when it comes to market structure these are very very key for you to understand so Remember, we spoke about the premium prices and the discounted prices, right? So those are also very key things that you need to understand that we need to buy. We need to buy low and sell high. So together with that, what you also need to understand is that market structure or uh, um, a trend is not broken until let's start with the downtrend over here. So the market is making lower lows and lower highs, right? So this is how the downtrend works, right? So this down this market is still in a downtrend for as long as these lower lower lows these new lower lows are being created so the market is still in a downtrend the only minute that uh, the only moment that the market has turned or has broken out of this downtrend into turning and we start anticipating for a new uptrend is when these lower highs have been broken and the candle has to fully break above uh, this level over here and then come back to retest a level that is you know close or below just a little bit below a little bit above that level but basically retest that level again and then moves to the upside right so and then breaks past this new uh, high level that it has been made over here so that you can start creating those 
higher highs and higher lows confirming the uptrend right so uh, before that then we before if if that doesn't happen that basically means that we're still in a downtrend right so you need to be very careful with that because in this case over here the market can actually just choose to you know if it can just choose to come to this level over here but then doesn't close up uh, it doesn't uh close above this maybe it's a is it's a week right so if if a week comes to this level and then closes below this level again it, it can actually just uh be a fake out and then continue to the downside right so this is why you need to understand that the trend is only only changes when the candle breaks above the previous lower high over here so breaks above the previous lower high and closes above it and then retest that level and then pushes away from from that level right so the opposite uh, for uh, applies when it comes to an uptrend so basically an uptrend we are making our uh, higher highs and then higher lows and then a higher high higher low higher high higher low all right so what happens is that as long as we're still making these higher highs over here we're still in an uptrend you need to this is something that is very very important and you need, you need to keep this in mind at all times so as long as we're making those high highs we are still in an uptrend but the minute that we break past these lower highs over here or this higher lows actually sorry in an uptrend we call this higher lows so the minute that we break past those and close below this higher low and then come back to retest somewhere uh, around this level that this market is at because we broke past it and then now we're retesting it and then push away from it passing this new low that we've made over here making a lower low and then a lower high over here that is the only time that we've actually broken out of the uptrend and now we're starting to look for the downtrend right so these are very important when it comes to understanding market structure because market structure is basically the basis of your analysis right so you need to understand Understand exactly when we are when when we are we done with an uptrend you know so that your analysis is actually correct okay so now once we basically have understood that the market trend has changed and we, we we've we have seen that that clear breakout of the trend we can also look at fundamentals to make sure that the uh, the current news on that uh, on that pair or instrument that you're trading is actually going in accordance with what you're seeing on the market right so it's always best to have the fundamentals supporting your direction that you actually go against fundamentals because fundamentals no matter what is happening on the market or what the market structure is showing you if fundamentals are saying sell and your setup is saying buy usually the market will go in the direction of the news right because the news they basically reflect what is happening in the economy right so if you know for example like the petrol prices is going up you cannot uh, you cannot expect the the rent to to strengthen right because uh, it's something that is it, there is some negative news for the economy right so you know investors will be running away and all that stuff so basically there's no way that your setup will stay validated if the uh, if fundamentals are saying some negative uh, news on the uh, south african rent so basically it will be better to go and analyze the oil or the um, yeah go and analyze the oil and see if you can actually get some buys on there because there's some positive news for the oil price right so it has to go is, is going up which means which is positive fundamentals for the oil so if you can find some positive bullish setups on the oil that would be more that would be way better than taking some bullish uh, setups on the south african rand when the economy you know when there is some negative news or fundamentals against the south african economy okay so now that we have spoken about trend line liquidity here's a quick example of the charts that we can uh, look at so we're just going to look at the different types of liquidity that we've been uh, talking about so i've just have a few examples over here and we're just going to do go in deeper into detail with that right so right now as you can see over here we have uh, let's start with the um, double bottom liquidity over here right so basically we have a double bottom uh, over here as you can see uh, equal lows over here right so the market came down and actually just swept away all the liquidity that was over here right so in in an uh, in an obvious case with the most uh, retail traders what they'll be looking at over here is that uh, okay we have a double bottom right so some may be anticipating a triple bottom and then wait for that triple bottom to happen but mostly when we have this double bottom over here we basically taking our trades as retail traders and basically we, we we go with the market right but then this is where the market uh, makers they basically capture us right so uh, in most cases we put our stop loss just below this level over here uh, because we we're giving the market some room to breathe right so so the smart money already knows about what we're doing with this uh, with our trading concept and then they come back to retest those uh, those uh, levels just before they push the market 
up again from those levels right so in this case those who were waiting for a triple bottom check for this uh, on this setup over here uh, we actually have a, a, another confirmation over here if we go down to the 50 minute time frame there's actually a beautiful W formation on this setup over here uh, which was an extra confirmation for you to actually enter on this trade right so in this case our entry will be based on the double bottom liquidity grab over here uh, which can happen over here but also the W formation which gave us a confirmation for this uh, trade to happen over here right so this is an example of a double bottom liquidity grab where you have equal lows and then the market comes back to retest all the stop losses or swipe away all the stop losses that we've put just below here uh, for most retail traders right so moving on here we have an example of a trend line liquidity grab uh, so what happened in this case so in an in as we explained uh with the illustrations we basically said when we're in a, in a downtrend uh, retail traders are looking to enter our trades on this retest of this trend line over here right so what will happen in a typical setup what are we looking for maybe we find a bearish engulfing candle in this area over here and basically that's when we take this sell over here right so we're targeting the uh, the the next lows over here right so or maybe we anticipating that the market will actually create another lower low uh, because we're still in a downtrend so basically the market makers we basically they know that this is where our stop loss is because we put it just above uh, the trend line so because once the market breaks once the market breaks through this trend line and then come back to retest it, then we are no longer interested in that trend line, right? As retail traders, right? So the market makers knows about this, right? So this is what they would do. This is what they would do. So in this case, they broke through the trend line came back into this little area over here and then pushed the market down again all the way there as you can see this is a massive move that followed after this to so the breakout of this uh of this trend line over here right just to grab some liquidity but what actually fueled uh, these guys to actually come back into this zone over here is what we have is what we call imbalance right so imbalance basically just refers to when the market moves away from a position but without mitigating the uh these prices that are in between in these movements right so as you can see here our, our last bullish candle over here the week is stopped is stopped right here right but then from here all the way down to this level we don't have any weeks that are touching or grabbing liquidity from this previous week over here right so what happens is that the market will actually come back into these zones because there's a lot of money that has been not uh taken in uh, in the zones. so this is where the market is coming back to retest those those levels so basically imbalance is where we are looking for the market to come back into before moving to the downside right so this is basically another attraction that caused the uh, the big boys to come in and then uh, take some liquidity growth in this levels before moving to the downside so that is what we refer to as imbalance so you need to be looking for this so how do you plot them the previous week uh, this is where you put your you, this is where you put your line and then you look for the next week uh, that is closest to that one right so in this case basically the first one would be this one over here right and then as you can see the market came back to try to try to uh, to to cover that gap that is there but then it still failed right so it moved away leaving this whole gap over here so the market later on had to come back and then fill in this gap before pushing the market to the downside right so that is what we call um, imbalances so this is something that the market makers will always be looking for uh, before they actually push the market to the downside right so uh, together with the liquidity grab uh, it basically just you know is now we have two confirmations here where the market would actually fall uh, when it comes to this level so what would you be looking for here entries based on an order block right so in the previous video we've explained order blocks but basically here in this case we'll be looking at this last bullish candle as our uh is our order block right so we are going to be we, we are going to explain uh, um the three types of order blocks that you can look for but one of them is the last bullish candle in an uptrend uh, when we're looking to sell right when you're looking for a sell order block uh, basically as you can see the market perfectly came into this uh, order block like about 50 percent of it before pushing to the downside right so this is what we call uh an order block and then uh, you know an order block after imbalance so the scenario that we have here is that we have a uh, trend line liquidity grab and then we have our imbalances over here and then we have our order block over here right so a very good setup uh, in this case what we would do is just to put our we have our entry 
right on the tip of this um right right on the bottom of this uh, of this order block candle over here and then our stop loss will be just above this week or exactly on the week it's up to you but basically after retesting after a back testing we've seen that just giving us some space above that uh, that week over there will actually save you in most cases from getting your stop loss being hit right so and then we will obviously aim for the lows because we're anticipating a downtrend and we're expecting the market to actually make a new lower low over there right so uh, in this case this is just five uh, five uh, five point seven one is to 5.7 risk to reward ratio but remember right now we are on the h4 right so if you actually go down to 15 minute five minute chart we'll be able to refine this and even get a smaller smaller much smaller uh, stop loss uh, for this setup over here allowing us to actually have an increased risk to reward ratio right so refining is something that we're going to jump into later in this video as well so just uh, stay tuned for that but anyways this is an example of uh, double bottom liquidity as well as trend line liquidity so if you can just look at more over here so this is basically just the same setup as we have on nasdaq but this is us 30 so in most cases you stage in nasdaq they move uh basically in the same direction right so in most cases right so as you can see right here we had our double bottom the market come back to this uh, to retest this level and then uh it showed up right so in this case i think if you can just go down to 15 minute charge you will see um a perfect w formation that basically gave us the uh the the confirmation that the market was about to go in our direction remember one of the best strategies that we teach here on day and night strategy uh day and night forex is the w formation at the low of the day so as you can see we have a beautiful w formation over here and basically the market never looked back from that point onwards right so we could have had our uh entry just above this candle over here as you can see we have a bullish uh, engulfing over here and as well as a morning star pattern right there if i can just quickly uh, zoom in for you here you can see we have that confirmation over here right so we have a morning star which is also a bullish engulfing area and it's basically a w formation just after just after liquidity grab uh from the double bottom that we have here right so that gave us a beautiful trade and basically it just went for some crazy risk to reward ratio because it is also refined right on the 15 minute chart anyways to move on uh with another example here we have on euro usd we actually have an example of um double top liquidity grab as well so as you can see here it actually came with just a week and then it pushed the market to the downside right so uh what happened here is that we have our equal tops over here as you can see and then the market uh just came back to retest that or to take liquidity and then push the market down to the downside right so uh in this case if you're aiming for these lows over here you could have been stopped out over here the year it didn't but um you know in actual reality when you're actually on a trade on your brokers sometimes due to spread you can actually be kicked out at this level over here right so uh this is why we say this you could have been kicked out over there you just need to keep plotting your your areas of interest right so what do we refer to as in areas of interest we're talking about these order blocks that you're seeing over here right so basically in this case we this is an order block we're expecting the market to come back into this zone and then push to the upside right so if you had sold at this level because of the um double top liquidity uh double top over here or the liquidity grab basically you would be looking to exit here because you see that we have an order block uh that has not been not been fulfilled yet so basically it's still an uh an order block that we're waiting for the market to come back so it did come back over here and this as you can see it actually pushed up from that level again so again this is what we call our range right remember we spoke about the ranges where we're looking to sell at premium price and we are looking to buy at the discounted prices right so this will be a discounted price with the order block we're looking to sell at the premium price with uh with the liquidity grab as well over here right so it's just different factors that you are looking at but basically buy low sell high that is still the concept that you need to understand right so that's those are the few examples that we have for you when it comes to uh, these different types of liquidity grabs as well as some of the order blocks examples right so now we're going to move on uh, to another topic which will be uh, the refining of the order blocks right so remember here we just spoke about refining of order blocks right so how do you actually refine those order blocks and to basically give you an example a picture of this we actually have an example on BTC USD right so uh, this concept they apply to any type of market right because this is basically how the market moves in no matter what of no matter what type of market it is that you're looking at so right now we're looking at the crypto market which is the bitcoin against us dollar right so we have a beautiful example here of a refining an order block so that you can increase your risk to reward ratio right so as you can see the first trade here if we took this entry it will be one is to three but then in the second one that we have over here it gives it's actually double the reward a risk to reward as the first one so how do we get that how do we actually do that so that is what we're 
going to explain right here so right now as you can see we are on the h1 and on the h1 we have seen that we have our order block over here so if i can just take my brush right here so we have a high over here right and then we have our low over here right so now the market came and then push past this uh breaking past this high over here creating a new higher high and basically that leaves us with an order block at the bottom right here so our order block that we're looking at is basically this last bearish candle over here right so that is the order block that we're looking at in this point again we're going to explain the other two different types of order blocks but at the moment we're looking at this last bearish candle of this order block right so this is the order block that we highlighted as you can see with this purple color over here so now that is the trade that we've taken uh if we were to take our trade on this h1 we would take our trade based on this uh on this order block right and then put our entry right on top of it as you can see what we did over there uh that was what we would be looking for right we would be looking for entry over there but if we actually come down to maybe 15 minute charts if we can just start refining this trade as i have marked over here already let me just go back in time here so as you can see what we have um the actual move so when it comes to order blocks we are looking for the candle the last bearish candle in this case we're going to the upside right so the last bearish candle that uh formed before the move that actually broke the recent high right so remember this is the recent high over here and then the move that actually broke this high started from this bearish after this bearish candle over here so this is the last bearish candle that we have before the market broke this high over here so this is a candle that we're interested in so again i highlighted it with a red box over there as you can see we highlighted it with a red and gray box over there uh, and then we go down to even a smaller time frame which is the h uh, which is the five minute time frame over here to see if we can not refine this even further right so getting to our five minute time frame we'll notice that we can actually refine this a little bit further so again Again, this is the move that broke uh, the previous high right but as you can see this is the, this is the actual last candle that we have the last bearish candle over here so we put a block around it again and that allows us to actually grab, have this uh, entry that we then plotted over here so as you can see right here uh, this is where we got our entry from right so it's refining after refining we refined our entry from the h1 order block we came to the 15 minute and then we came back down to the five minute order block right so uh, we can actually go further than this but it's just like uh, there's really no need to go to m1 even though you can trade from the n1 m1 order blocks but you know would prefer to uh give the the, the market some room to breathe especially if you're trading nasdaq and us 30 you know this can give you some crazy spikes so you always want to be careful and want to give the uh, the market enough room to breathe right so that's why we'll be stopping here at the five minute in a chart uh, so that you give the market some room to breathe but as you can see our stop loss we accommodated this uh, this small spike over here just in case the market actually comes back to retest that level right so if we put it exactly at the bottom of the order block it'll be dangerous as you can see the market almost took us out over here but if we accommodate at least this the low of this um, pin bar that that formed over here uh, the just the, that week if we accommodate that and then it will be basically have a safe trade right so as you can see uh roughly about one is to six one is to seven and basically at the same height right so this is the same trade the same take profit so this is one is to three but this is now one is to six it just doubles because we have refined our entries right so that is how we refine entries uh, so that you increase your risk to reward ratio now that we have spoken about this uh, refining of entry of, of entries on order blocks let's talk about the three types of order blocks that you need to understand or need to know when it comes to this market right so uh, we're just going to explain those right here for you so we're just going to explain those uh, with some examples example so we already gave you the the last bullish or the last bearish candle depending on the market that you're looking at whether it's an uptrend or the downtrend so we already gave you the examples of those but then there are also other two order block types that you can also take a look at the three types of order blocks that we have is basically the first one which is the standard block so basically the last bullish or the last bearish candle depending on whether you're an uptrend or in a downtrend right so those are what we call the standard one right so so we've already give you the examples on those and then the second one is what we have as the break breakout blocks right so the breakout block basically means that when we have an example of uh, let's say the market is going in a downtrend right 
and then basically we have an order block over here we are waiting we we we're basically anticipating that the market should come into this zone and basically uh take off with us over here but then what happens is that the market actually failed and then breaks out of that out of that zone and then basically comes back to retest it right so this is what we refer to as the uh breakout block it's, a, it's, it's an order block that's supposed to give us a bullish movement or a bearish movement depending on the de on the trend that you're looking at but then it was uh, it was broken out of and then basically it failed right it failed and then the market came back to came back to retest it so on that retest that is where we are looking for uh an entry on that on that setup right so basically just a failed setup of an order block and then we're looking for uh a, a retest in that zone and then we uh, we take our trades in the opposite direction to that order block so that is what, that is what we refer to as the breakout order block and then uh lastly we have the engulfed order block right so with the engulfed order block is basically just um if you can show you some examples over here is like the one that we showed you of a morning star over here right so when we have an order block that is engulfed it basically just means that we are looking at this smaller candle uh the last candle over here right and then when we have it engulfed by the by the next candle the bullish or the bearish engulfing candle next to it that basically just gives us our next uh that gives us our engulfed block right so it's basically sort of the the very common pattern that we know bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing candle right so those are the two candles that we'll be looking for in those zones where which we call the uh, engulfed order block right so it's basically the exact same pattern as the uh, bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing but in this sense we just call them order blocks right so is that is what we will be looking for those are our three different types of, of order blocks okay so now that we've spoken about the, these three types of order block the next thing that we need to look for that also influence your points of interest or your order blocks is basically the these following three factors these three factors are your trading sessions right so so we have different types of trading sessions right so the best ones that we can uh, encourage you to look for your order blocks in is the uh is basically the new york session the london session those are the sessions where the most markets are actually active right so they they will have the most movements you can anticipate some huge moves uh in those sessions and basically those are the ones that you actually uh, want you to look at uh, more than some other sessions such as, such as the asian session which is basically best known for consolidation right so if you want to stay if you want to be stuck in the market forever basically the uh then you you can try trading the asian session right so those uh that that is the number one factor right so your trading sessions always look for the new york and london session um order blocks as those who actually uh, work out the best right so the next the next thing or the next factor that will influence your order blocks is basically the fundamentals right the news right so if news like nfp is coming and basically is opposing your order block basically you can just cross out that order block and then just wait for the market to do its thing and see where the market is going right so you never want to go against the fundamentals and we, as we explained earlier in this video and then the last the last point is basically the quick moves into the order blocks right so if the market is coming into your order block with some huge momentum right so if it's coming in with some huge candles into your into your order block the chances are that it will actually break through that uh it will actually break through that order block and then come back to retest it and then change the you know continue with the direction right so you you just have to be a bit more patient and then wait for more confirmations uh, instead of just entering maybe on a you know a buy limit or sell limit uh based on the you know based on those candles because the you, the market are still the, the market still has the momentum to go in the opposite direction right so you just have to wait for more more confirmations before actually taking those trades so those are the the three factors right so number one your trading sessions new york and london those are the best order blocks and then number two we're looking at the fundamentals right if fundamentals are going against your order blocks it's best to just stay away from the market and then number three last but not least you have to look for those moments the the momentum in the candles right if the momentum is enough to break through the order block and go past you know go past and change basically change the direction continue in the direction where it is actually going right which is opposing our order block then you have to be just uh, patient and then wait uh, for some extra confirmations if you're still going to take the trade now the last thing that we need to talk about when it comes to uh trading the order blocks is basically the entries right so when it comes to entries there are three ways to enter your trades right uh this includes setting setting up your entry your entry levels as well as your stop loss right so for example let's say this is our order block over here uh, let's just choose this candle over here this bearish candle over here if we are looking for this for entries in this case we have three options right so our first option is to take a trade we can enter our trade right at the tip of this uh, because here this is the last bearish candle we're looking to go bullish right so it is this 
is the safest uh, entry that we can recommend you to be looking for, right? So we, when you're actually looking to enter right at the tip or at the highest point of that candle, right, uh, of that week, this is where the market can actually just come and then just tap into that zone and then turn around that moment, right? So you need to be very careful. Uh, and this, this, this will allow you to tap into most of these trades and actually not miss out on these trades, right? So the next step is when we actually set our entry orders or our limit orders, pending orders on the body of the candle, right? So we set it on the body of the candles and this is basically when we are uh, waiting for the, you, we want to work with the actual price, right? Just remember when you work with um, with these tips of the of the weeks, it's basically just the price, you know, it's, it's, it's a level where the price fails to, to, to close at, but it's a level that, you know, price has shown us that it has interest in, but then it failed to close at that level, right? So we are looking to work with what is actually the, the actual price that the market is working with, right? Whether with the where our candle closed at, right? So that is, is where that level would be at. And then the, uh, this is now we don't really recommend this. As we said, the market can usually just come and then take, uh, you know, just tip on that point over here, right? So especially we, especially when you have refined your, your order blocks, right? So maybe this is now on the one minute or it's on a five minute chart. And then so if for you to actually put it on the on the body of this candle, you actually, you know, you're risking losing out on that trade. So it's always recommended that you put it on the highest point of the candle that we're looking at. Uh, rather than this the, rather than this position over here right so and then the last position that you can also put is the the equilibrium point of that candle right so which is basically just the 50 percent right so the 50 percent point uh, which is uh, which is what we just marked over here with this uh, GAN box over here so this is where we would be looking for our trade but the chances of you missing out on these trades are very very high because the market might not even come down uh, to retest the 50 percent of that candle it might just come down again to the top or maybe to the bottom at most and then uh, continue in the uptrend but then the benefits of uh, taking your trades at either the body or the equilibrium is that the lesser your stop loss the more your risk to reward ratio right so uh, just looking at this different scenarios if you were to buy at this level over here and then set our stop loss at the same level let's say this uh, at this line over here right uh, at this line that we have over here if we were to take our trades over here and then we are targeting um, let's say the previous highs over just over here right so if I can just highlight this, um, you know, at this high candle, at the, at the highest point of this candle, basically this is uh, one is to two, right? And then we take our next trade based on the body, on the body of the candle over here, same stop loss and then same take profit as well. But as you can see, this is already one is to three. And then if you were going to take this trade based on the equilibrium price, which is the uh, the 50 percent point of this candle of our order block candle uh, if we can just take a, this trade and see how much we would actually be gaining from that you know with the same stop loss and same take profit that's already one is to five right so the smaller your stop loss is the more you actually gain out of that trade right but uh, the more you risk not actually entering those trades right so it's all about your preferences and this is why we recommend that you back test what works the what works the best for you and then you stick to that right so back testing is always key when it comes to you know mastering and refining the strategy so that it works out uh for you the most right in most cases right so that's basically all that we have for you in this video. So we spoke about different, we spoke about all the different key elements or the key concepts that you need to understand when it comes to trading the order blocks and the smart money, basically the way the big boys do, right? So you can just rewatch this video as many times as you need to so that you can, you know, understand every single bit of this, uh, of this concept that we explained. And obviously more videos are coming as we explain even more in detail on this uh, smart money way of, uh, of trading. And you can also check out our previous videos as we explained, you know, things like order blocks, you know, you know, entries and all that stuff. So, so make sure that you actually subscribe to the channel, you turn on notifications and then we'll be seeing you on the next one with more of this uh, great knowledge over here so thank you for watching this video all the way to the end don't forget to hit the subscribe don't forget to leave a comment down below we always attend to all our comments if you got any questions you uh, there's an opportunity for you to get your questions answered so make sure that you to uh, to leave that comment down below and we'll be seeing you on the next one